I'm serious. Um, actually, for the Mazu, I uh, just take notes here. Yeah. You know the Mazu? So the Mazu is not far from Tokyo. And it's actually close to Mount yeah. Fuji. It's too close for me. So if you'd like to see, <laughs> yeah, if you like to see uh, the Mount Fuji closely, so please visit us. So I'm talking about a story to climb up the Mount Fuji. Namely, the challenge to clarify the exposure mechanism in 3D by neutrino radiation hydrodynamics. And I will show some progress of uh, a project using the Boltzmann solver. And I'd like to also discuss its future uh, using the exascale computing. So, uh, this morning we have had already the useful uh, uh, review, the powerful review. Uh, by Tony Mezzacatta uh, to ascertain the explosion mechanism. So here I focus on the uh, several points, uh, three points actually in my talk. So I stress the nutrient transfer is essential to, uh, to find out the outcome of the explosion and uh, uh, near, well, the phenomenon near the threshold. So and the second point, the 60 Boltzmann SOBA is running and it works in the uh, current uh, supercomputing facilities. But still, we need extra scale computing. It is necessary to perform the full 60 Boltzmann uh, simulation. So I'll tell you. I'll tell you those so I'm talking about uh, next generation port 1 full CD calculation by replacing the current approximations uh, in a, a simulation like this. This is the simulation of the CD supernova. Uh, uh, when you computer, they put up those machines. So this Takiwaki is uh, uh, done by the Takiwaki is my brief. And uh, even in the latest simulations, we have some approximations in the nutrient transfer. So I want to replace and uh, 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 evaluate the effects uh, step by step. So let me start with this uh, nutrient transfer to evaluate the nutrient heating. So, uh, for this, I uh, need to uh, explain the key law of neutrinos in supernovae. So, we start from the iron core graphs, from the passive stars, and then there's a, a core bounce and shock wave response. And the shock wave stores somewhere between the of the material falling down. So, in the 1D simulations, a stronger calculation, we have uh, no explosion. It's so hopeless. So, Something is necessary to revive the shock propagation. So the question is, what is the main cause of failure? So we have some uh, mixture of the uh, multi-dimensional effects, body physics, nuclear reactions, and equation state of dense matter and nuclear heating mechanism. So uh, we have to uh, pin down one by one. Uh, so here I'm focused on the nuclear heating mechanism. So uh, speaking about the uh, energy. Uh, carried by the neutrinos. We have the observation of supernova neutrinos and we have uh, 10 to the 53 L. On the other hand, so exposure energy is 10 to the 51 L. So this is just a uh, hundred so, you know, total energy released by the gravitational energy. So one may uh, ask the question if 1% of the neutrinos uh, may be enough for the explosion. So to answer this uh, question, we have to describe the nuclear heating uh, in detail. So, here's the nuclear heating mechanism for the bubble shock. So, we have the situation uh, 100 millisecond after the bounce. So, we have the uh, shock around 200 kilometers stored uh, due to the material falling down. And we have the proton neutron star hot and Richard neutrinos. And those neutrinos are emitted, and the portion of neutrinos are. Uh, uh, absorbs the quiet material just behind the shock wave. So this kind of process contributes to the transfer of energy uh, to the material. And this contributes to the heating of the material and uh, to push the, the shock wave forward to revive the shock propagation. So this is the idea uh, proposed by originally by Bailey and uh, shown by the uh, simulation by Wilson as a great explosion. And, uh, uh, transfer of energy uh, from neutrinos to matter is can be estimated like this several times 10 to 
the 51 gel, which is comparable to the explosion energy, and also it's comparable to the other effects like some other uh, effects or something. So we have to pin down, we have to uh, get the uh, right number for this, and this depends really on the nuclear energy flux emitted from here and absorbed by the targets. Now, the, the question uh, of this nuclear heating is actually a difficult problem because we are in the intermediate regime of the, uh, uh, between diffusion and free streaming. So from center to outside, we have uh, uh, diffusion, a uh, little uh, diffuse away and gradually, and then go straight uh, in the free streaming region of outside. But here we have in a heating region, important region is in between. And uh, since we have, we need to uh, evaluate nuclear heating rate using the average energy class and the spectrum around the nuclear sphere and uh, propose, uh, the direction of the angles. So we need to solve the nuclear transfer uh, for energy angle distribution. Even in a 1D trigger calculation, we have a 3D problem. And we know that this diffusion approximation is not enough uh, because we have the, the even 10% change of nuclear heating may affect the outcome when it's exposed. So exposure may turn out to be the wrong exposure if uh, we want further. So we have to uh, clarify this and uh, this effect also competing with other effects. So we need to solve the neutral transfer uh, in 3D space. So this is a challenge uh, uh, we have to attack and the Boltzmann equation is 60. So uh, we solve the neutral transfer in 3D space, but uh, that means I work in 60, so 3D space with uh, 3D momentum. So we have uh, R theta phi, and then we need uh, we have the uh, energy and two angles to determine the direction of the propagation of the So we solve uh, the uh, Boltzmann equation for the time evolution of the 60 uh, distribution of neutrino uh, distribution functions. This is a rather uh, simple form, and we have the uh, left hand side the neutrino number change along the uh, neutrino propagation. And uh, on the hand side, we have a change of uh, number uh, by nuclear reactions. This part is actually a hard part, and we have the uh, energy angle dependent reactions determined by the composition in dense matter from obtained from the uh, equation state table. Actually, this is also another uh, important issue. And uh, I'll be working now with actually the, the nuclear physics part as well, and we are putting uh, in that situation. Now, uh, so currently we have a uh, long history, and here's a brief uh, uh, status uh, uh, description of the progress of nuclear transfer. So apparently there are many uh, listings, uh, should be listed here. And in 1D, around 2000, since 2000, uh, we can do the fast print score calculation in, in general relativistic framework. Uh, so any Boltzmann equation or momentum equation in combination. And so that's uh, clear uh, to show the non-explosion in historical calculation. And then in 2D, 3D, we have to do some uh, approximate uh, treatment and uh, state-of-the-art uh, calculations. We have some, uh, for example, diffusion uh, or IDSA uh, type calculation which is suitable in central part, but we have some approximation with flux data. And uh, the popular one uh, is a day by day approach, so we uh, draw the line from the center uh, it was for various directions, and we solve the 1D transport independently, dropping the, uh, the lateral transport at the outside of the area. So, this one. Uh, with work, uh, challenging work in 2D uh, by solving the SMS or angle, punch angle uh, calculation in 2008, but we need full 3D calculation to add the blood uh, challenge uh, problem. So we have developed a uh, uh, new code to solve the uh, uh, 3D space meeting transfer, but actually the 60 uh, Boltzmann solver. 
So we are solving the, this type of proportional equation in spherical coordinates. So we have the time uh, r theta pi and two angles uh, derivatives here. And also energy mixing is, uh, should be uh, written here. We discretize the, this uh, equation in a quadratic form. Uh, this is the multi energy and multi angle uh, framework, uh, also called by SM method. And we proceed the time in by implicit method for stability and time step and equilibrium uh, maintenance. And uh, uh, we have the gradient time for neutrino reactions by absorption emission scattering and so on. And this is a difficult part actually, and we have a uh, huge different time scale, millions of time scales difference, so the equation is stiff. That's why we have to solve that, that this uh, equation by implicit method. Now, we, here's the uh, uh, list of the neutral reactions in the intermediate in the current core. Uh, actually, this corresponds to the uh, reduced capacity the body uh, shown us. And uh, we have the emission absorption by uh, nuclear nuclei and scattering with nuclear nuclei. And these are actually missing neutral electron scattering. Uh, although it's minor, we have to put in uh, later on. And we have a pair process uh, from these uh, reactions. And we solve the three species in the current calculation. So current computing resources, though it's limited, so only with the iso energy scattering, so we, we drop one thing and the other uh, more delicate uh, effects. And also we have some limited realistic effects. Now, the main computational role for its scaling it's a uh, scale computing. And, well, we have the matrix solver of this type, by linearizing the equation, the Boltzmann equation. And we have the, uh, this matrix, uh, uh, sparse large matrix, and we have the uh, array of uh, matrices. And we have the uh, size 10 to the nines by nine. Nice. And we have uh, millions of grids, uh, space grid points, and thousands of grid you know, uh, points. And we need memory size about 10 gigabytes for looking the distribution. Once not shared, and we, have, we need the one terabyte for matrix uh, to store the matrix. And we are solving the uh, matrix by creating method with a uh, preconditioner. And we're working with the computational scientists to solve the this kind of uh, different uh, matrix, space matrix. Now, so uh, I want to uh, show that 60 Boltzmann is working. And here I show some examples of the applications to supernova, uh, CD supernovae. So I'm working with, on the uh, couple with hydrodynamics. This is uh, still a uh, test case. And so what we have done so far is that we can transfer in CD matter distribution phase, kind of a post-processing. So we, uh, so now we can get the stationary distribution of neutrinos in 6D uh, space. And we have checked the, uh, the test series by diffusion and the direction of formal uh, solution. Uh, and that's in the, the, the old paper, uh, you can see. And uh, we have the MPI parallel record by the components in the, the, the uh, spatial Arctic and Pi directions. And we have uh, uh, basically, uh, we are running the uh, Hitachi uh, SR uh, if not, uh, with this uh, width size. And we need uh, 1.6 terabyte and a bunch of data uh, coming out. And we have tested the uh, 2000 MPI uh, uh, job on the VG2. So, now, now some results from our calculation. So, uh, uh, so we fixed the uh, CD profiles of the supernova core, uh, taken from the other uh, simulations. Uh, and then we solved the uh, 60 Boltzmann equation uh, to obtain the stationary neutrino uh, distribution. So, this, this is the uh, initial distribution of neutrino. This is the isosurface of the Sorry. the uh, uh, EV bar, and we, this is just a um, uh, super movie. So neutrinos propagate in a uh, three-dimensional way, and we get the uh, all the information, the 
capacity moments with uh, leading weather. And so this is the uh, as a surface of uh, the uh, having the spherical and some deformed and spherical layers of the ice surface. So let's look at this uh, uh, profile. So by solving the 6D Boltzmann, so we describe the non-linear transfer. This is the uh, snapshot view from the North Pole. So we have uh, the point of the Z-axis uh, to plot it. And, uh, uh, this is size and the uh, size uh, size. So we have the uh, uni bar abundant at the high temperature region of the proton neutron star, and we have the uh, flux display, uh, display by hollow. We have uh, uh, actually the adenosyl high direction flux uh, due to the this deformation. And then this is another view from the side. So this is the G axis, uh, one uh, five slice from the, the older uh, snapshot. So we have again the few uh, deform distribution here, and we have the, the non radial uh, direction uh, flux uh, like this. So uh, this is different from the current the, the, uh, calculation, actually. So here is the comparison with some approximation. So we can do the uh, actually way by way type uh, calculation in uh, our code by dropping up the, the non-radial uh, theta five direction. So we can do uh, the same uh, snapshot and same uh, cal uh, calculation. So this is the 60 Boltzmann uh, result. So again, the snapshot from along the price slice. So we have the deformed the distribution, but somehow uh, straight out distribution here. But uh, we have the uh, distribution same uh, here, but we have some uh, deformed shape at the 100 meter closer. So this is due to the radial uh, approach. So only radial transfer is solved. So uh, it enhances, it, it reflects the, the central part. So we have kind of bias to be enhanced at the uh, larger area. But in 60 Boltzmann, we solved the non radial transfer, and we have uh, integrated values and here from the various directions uh, from the central approach. Here is the, the effect on the explosion. So it, this is the one example of the comparison of the Newton heating ray uh, in the 60 volts minus ray by ray uh, case. So blue means Newton is cooling, so Newton is emitted, and it is a heat material uh, heated uh, shown by that. So uh, we have the uh, two comparison, and uh, well, it looks very similar. And in some case, we have some. Uh, well, uh, enhancement here, the blow up of the heating rate, and there is a plot of deviation from the 60 volts uh, type, and then we have the uh, 20 percent waste rate on this side, and the other uh, waste rate uh, values on this one. So we have to be uh, careful, and we want to study more systematically on uh, this type of effect. Uh, while I'm working on that uh, kind of uh, uh, Newton transport uh, as a post processing, we are doing the, uh, the uh, uh, progress of the cutting with hydrodynamics. And still, I'm working on the code on the 2D, 3D uh, calculation. This is uh, well, 2 hydro code, 2 hydro code with sassy motion with white box, and we are switching to the Boltzmann solver on top of this type of calculation. And this is 1D quadrat test. Done by the hydro optics with Boltzmann solver for 1D spectral calculation. We have the bounce, go bounce and shock bounce, and uh, some stalls after somewhere around 100 kilometers. So, uh, okay, so within two minutes or so, we, I want to uh, explain the, uh, the exoskeleton. scale. So, scaling up to large scales, what will come up? So uh, this is the scaling of the memory annotation. Uh, this is by, from my uh, current calculation. So we have this type of the matrix pattern, and we have a uh, uh, huge array of the block dense matrix. So this matrix uh, represents the, in no case, current case, Newton angle changes in collision time. So this is dense. 
and book size is M is the uh, something like 100 uh, for the neutral of angle width. So memory size goes M squared times the energy zone times the uh, space grid points. And the equations proportional to maximizing a case as M cubed times the energy grid and then uh, space uh, grid points by some uh, assumption, but we have checked the, the number with my uh, calculation. So necessary computational resources to run the 60 volts one solver with high resolution is for it. So we have the uh, width size of this, uh, and we need a 6 tera 14 point operation per step. And we go to the higher resolution space and uh, neutral angles like this, we have uh, uh, 80 beta uh, 14 point operation per step. Note that this is the, uh, for a uh, very short Boltzmann, so we have some iteration in, uh, when we couple with the hydrodynamics, so we have a factor 5 return or something. So we need definitely expect flux machines for two sixty simulations. So to summarize, so uh, uh, we, to clarify the exclusion mechanism, we can transfer this is essential. We need to hit a mechanism for explosion. Uh, we need to determine the effects precisely around the threshold. And 60 solver, I go to a solver once in it. Uh, in the we need to transfer to CD and second level core. And we describe a nonlinear transport and we are examining the uh, approximation in the current simulations. And uh, it's a scale of computing is necessary to perform the first simulation. And for that, we need a computational and physics collaboration. Thank you.